In 2022 at BNS, we kind of teased that there might be a really great partnership coming online. And we are so thrilled and delighted to be able to announce that our third Farm Direct partner is Finca La Fortaleza and Maria Esther Salt and her husband, Pascual Castillo, who are doing really just incredible work in Chiapas, Mexico. Pascual Castillo had been in the coffee business for decades. When he first went to Chiapas looking for coffee, he fell in love with the people there. And so over the years, he developed very, very close partnerships with thousands of small producers in Chiapas. They went through some hard times together. There were moments of great violence in Mexican society. Sometimes even Pascual's company's own drivers would refuse to go pick up coffee in these far-flung villages in Chiapas. But Pascual never, ever left those farmers behind. And then their ultimate test came in 2014 when a slow simmering epidemic of rust in the coffee plants just blew up. And by the end of 2014, coffee production in Chiapas went to zero. Every coffee producer in Chiapas lost the entirety of their crop. They had no way to feed their families. Pascual and his wife, Maria Esther, they decided that that was time for them to really step up. They happened to own some land in Chiapas. It was a successful cattle farm. And they made the decision pretty much overnight that they were going to transform that successful cattle farm into a successful model coffee farm that would allow a way for the farmers to learn new agronomy, for them to work with different species of coffee that might be more rust resistant, but also in the time of the transformation that would provide employment for these uh, small producers who had no way to feed their families. When you walk into Finca Fortaleza, it feels like you're in the Garden of Eden. You can hear water running and dripping everywhere. The soil, instead of feeling compacted, feels loose as it should in a coffee farm. You hear the birds singing. It's just beautiful. When we first met Pascual, he's a big man. He's very tall. He's a little gruff, although he's very proper and kind. And you get the sense that He's definitely taken a look at you. His wife, Maria Esther, is just as warm as he is gruff, as likely to give you a hug as he is to give you the look down the bridge of his nose. I have never met anybody that knows more about coffee than, than, than Pasquale, and even his own family is like at the dinner table, enough with the coffee talk, <laughs> you know. One of our rituals when we're at the farm, of course, is to go for a morning hike. Interestingly, Pasquale claims to not speak English, and of course my Spanish is really poor, but somehow magically out there, Pasquale does speak English, and we've gotten quite close. Maria Esther, she is a woman after my own heart. I find the work she does in that community to be so inspiring. One of the things that she organized was breast cancer screening, and Maria Esther made it a point to go to every family that she could reach. And they found women with breast cancer. And many were able to get treatment only because Maria Esther had the, had the passion to pull things together to make that possible for that community. You know, so many of these small producers have never been on the grid. They don't have a birth certificate. They don't have a bank account. And in order for them to really come into the light as coffee producers, Maria Esther works family by family to get the documentation needed it's just a huge undertaking. The thing about La Fortaleza is it's not just a coffee farm. It's an incubator of uh, small producers. And uh, what Maria Astaire and Pasquale do is they give all of their knowledge to all the farms. And we're talking about thousands of farms. They lend people their agronomists. They loan people money in order to get them through the season. They pick up their coffee. They're good for their terms, always. One thing that they have just given away is over two million coffee seedlings. When producers are dropping off their cherry to go through their dry mill, they'll often give them new seedlings. Why these new seedlings? Well, the old varieties were not resistant to rust, and the new varieties are. So they're just giving them that particular leg up. So once we decided that Finca La Fortaleza was going to be the perfect partner for us. 
truly, we would have been really, really happy to buy all of the coffee from Finca La Fortaleza because we support the work they're doing for small producers. But uh, Mary Esther and Pascual had other ideas. They really wanted to make this about the small producer. So they very, very carefully selected four that they thought would both meet our needs, but also serve as leaders and beacons to the other small producers that they work with. This is for our mutual benefit. And at first, as we were trying to figure out the economics of this deal, the small producers being in there made it made for some complicated math, right? We were mm. uh, trying to, to struggle with exactly how we, you know, got the, the numbers right. And I'm like, why are we bothering with the small producers mm. again until the light bulb hit me? How else are we going to change the coffee world? Because that's where most of the coffee is grown is by small producers with less than 10 acres. How are we ever going to reach a farm that's only got 10 acres? That wouldn't be possible in Chiapas, Mexico, without Mary Esther and Pascual. They've made that possible. You know, the thing about promises in, uh, in the coffee world is that so many of them go unfulfilled for the small producers. So we were there in December when we were just a promise, right? This is how it's going to go when we buy your coffee. And then we went back again in March when the harvest was done and everyone had received their payment and we had a chance to go visit all those farms. Miguel Angel Cruz, he had been Pascual's right-hand person through a lot of this transformation at La Fortaleza and I think he took the leap based on his trust in Pascual. But I'm not sure his family was convinced. When we went to Miguel's farm, this time his wife was there along with all of their children. Towards the end, she said, you know, I had to come because I didn't believe you. Why are you doing this? And, and Bob tried to explain that, you know, we believe in a different model and uh, we, our intention is to be here for the long term. And she started to cry and she said, thank you. No one's ever cared like this before. God bless Big B Coffee. And she says, you don't understand what this is going to mean for my family. <laughs> So she's saying that she's like asking for God to bless you and bless your company. Mm -hmm. That she barely understands a little yeah. bit of English, yeah. but that they're very grateful and they ask for God to bless you and your business so they can prosper too. Mm -hmm. Don Pascual Hernandez has been in the coffee business for 30 years and no buyer has ever walked his land. There's no pathways. And he wanted to show us the top of the hill. I mean, the rest of the group completely bailed on the whole thing, but there was... That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> there I was with Pasquale, and we were climbing up tree by tree on our hands and knees to get to the top of the mountain on that particular day, but that was so important to him. Juanita, Don Pasquale's wife, she took my face in her hands and was stroking my cheek and she started to cry. And she told me that uh, she had been praying all of her life that someone would come to buy their coffee, someone would come and walk their lands and come and meet their family and would come and care about the people behind their coffee. All Juanita wanted ever in her life was a better shot for her children and a chance for her family to be okay. I think that's all any of us mm. wants. You know, Marta is a woman in a male-dominated world. She certainly wanted us to know that she was tough. We were on her coffee field, and uh, she was talking about her plants and her plans for her plants. And, and I said, well, tell me about your, your dreams for your children. And she stopped, and she, she kind of hitched a little bit. And she said that her dreams aren't just for her children. Her dreams are for all of the children in her community because she wants all of them to have a chance to have a dream that they can fulfill. She wasn't able to pursue a higher education and she really, really, really wanted that. She never wants to see another child have that experience in her community. And she actually welled up. And then about 10 minutes later, she got mad at me for making her well up. She's like, I'm not a baby. I'm like, no one thinks you are. Um, it speaks to the fact that everybody has dreams and Marta is willing to do whatever it takes to make the dreams of those children come true.
So when we were first taken to meet Solomon at his farm, once you understand the family dynamics, it should come as no surprise that actually we barely met Solomon. We mostly met his dad, who was this larger than life character in town. And Solomon was standing off like in the back, in the corner, you know, just smiling and nodding. Finally, we had a chance to spend some time just with Solomon and his wife and their beautiful kids. He's very proud of what he's done on his coffee farm, and he should be. La Fortaleza was transformed from trampled cattle land, and we never saw that transformation physically. But when we visited Solomon's farm, we saw it. There was a line where you could step into the farm, and it was all shaded and 15 degrees cooler, and the plants were just lush. And then just step one yard over trampled hot grass. The impact that that kind of transformation has on the landscape is enormous, right? It lowers the temperature, it's really good for the birds, it reprovides natural habitat. But the impact that has to the planet is even bigger in terms of carbon sequestration. It is so powerful. If we could do that to all of Chiapas, Chiapas would become this guiding light in the world for what is possible. Solomon said he's always going to know that he's going in the right direction if he looks behind him and he sees his own son following in his footsteps. No matter how coffee is purchased, coffee has an impact in the world. When you look for people that are treating the planet right, treating their people right, and investing in their communities, what you're doing is you're finding people that are loving people. All we're doing is finding people that are doing this, and we're providing a marketplace. But that marketplace creates change all over the world. A name, a face, and a place for every coffee we serve. <laughs>